Let's continue our discussion on the development of the atomic theory with Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr theorized about atoms based on the scientific work of other scientists. In 1913, Niels Bohr proposed the planetary model of the atom. In this model, electrons orbit the nucleus like planets orbit the sun. Let's consider this diagram of the atom, the nucleus, around which electrons travel in orbits. Bohr began his study because he knew Rutherford's model of the atom was incorrect. He wanted to know why the negatively charged electrons did not fall into the positively charged nucleus. He proposed that there are orbits in which an electron moves around the nucleus without giving off energy. And as long as the electrons are moving in these orbits, they cannot give off energy and collapse into the nucleus. Each circular orbit or energy level is a fixed distance from the nucleus with a definite energy. Electrons can possess only certain amounts of energy and therefore can only be certain distances from the nucleus. The electrons must be found in specific orbits. They cannot be found anywhere. The greater the distance from the nucleus, the greater the energy. The energy associated with the first orbit is less than the energy associated with the second orbit, less than the third, less than the fourth. The closer you are to the nucleus, the less energy. In Bohr's model, each orbit can only hold a certain number of electrons. The first orbit can hold two, the second can hold eight, the third can hold 18, and the fourth can hold 32. Electrons fill lowest energy levels first. Ground state is when all the electrons are located in the lowest energy levels available. Bohr found that when gaseous atoms of a given element are heated, they emit light of specific colors or energies. Why? When an atom absorbs energy, electrons can absorb a discrete amount of energy. Discrete means specific. A specific amount of energy, called a quantum, and be promoted to a higher energy level. This condition is known as excited state. This diagram shows how energy is being absorbed by an atom in the ground state, causing an electron to jump to a higher energy level, creating the excited state. After an electron has been promoted to a higher energy level, it falls back to a lower energy level. And when it falls back, a photon of light equal to the difference in energy between the shells is emitted from the atom. When an electron in an excited state falls back down to a lower energy level, it emits energy in the form of light. The color of the light produced is related to the amount of energy released. Red light is low energy. Violet is high energy. The picture at the top shows photons of red and blue light. Notice that the red light has long wavelength. Long wavelength means low energy. The blue light has a shorter wavelength. The shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy. The emission of light occurs when an electron falls to a lower energy level and a photon is emitted. The photon's energy is equal to the difference between the higher energy orbit and the lower energy orbit. The emission of light is fundamentally related to the behavior of electrons. 
When you see the various colors produced by fireworks, those colors are caused by electrons dropping down to lower energy levels. This picture shows energy being absorbed in blue and energy being released in green. The modern view of the atom. The atom is mostly empty space. There are two regions. There's the nucleus, made up of protons and neutrons. The nucleus is small, dense, and positively charged. The electron cloud is the region where you might find an electron. The electrons are moving at the speed of light. And the electrons have negligible mass, and they're negatively charged. Consider, for example, that an atom is about 40,000 times bigger than the nucleus. An atom's diameter can be 2 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters, whereas its nucleus would have a diameter of 5 times 10 to the minus 13 centimeters. A nucleus is extremely small, yet it contains most of the mass. Electrons move randomly around the nucleus in an electron cloud. An electron cloud is a region of high probability of containing an electron. Remember, electrons do not travel in orbits. Today's atomic model is based on the principle of wave mechanics. According to the theory of wave mechanics, electrons do not move about an atom in a definite path, like the planets around the sun. Instead, electrons have a high probability of being located in the electron cloud at predictable distances from the nucleus, called energy levels. Like floors in a building, people cannot live in areas between the floors. There are seven energy levels. The reactivity of an atom depends on electron arrangement, and electron arrangement has to do with the number of electrons in the atom and how many energy levels are occupied. Reactivity also depends on valence electrons. Valence electrons are electrons in the outermost energy level, and most atoms want eight valence electrons. For the remainder of this discussion, you will be taking notes in your lab journals. Atomic spectra. Energy can be added to atoms in the form of light, electricity, or heat, causing electrons to jump to higher energy levels. This extra energy emitted when the excited electron falls back down to lower energy levels is given off in the form of light. The light emitted has wavelengths and colors that depend on the amount of energy being released. When all the electrons are in the lowest possible energy state, an atom is said to be in the ground state. If the right amount of energy is absorbed by an electron, it can jump to a higher energy level. This is an unstable momentary condition called the excited state. Let's look at this diagram representing an atom in the ground state. When energy is absorbed by the atom, energy in the form of heat, light, electricity, the electron jumps to a higher energy level and the atom is now in the excited state. When an electron falls back to a lower energy, more stable orbital, it might be the same orbital it started out in, but it might not, the atom releases the energy as light. An atom cannot absorb or release any amount of energy. Only a discrete, specific amount of energy can be absorbed or released. 
Not all atoms in a sample will absorb energy or be excited exactly the same. Therefore, there are various energy emissions within a given sample. The energy emitted occurs at specific points or lines in a spectrum. Each element has its own distinctive line spectrum, a kind of atomic fingerprint. This is a helium emission spectrum. Different elements emit different emission spectra because each element has a unique electron energy level system. Wavelengths corresponding to a large number of transitions combine to yield a specific color. Let's consider an excited lithium atom. When the excited electron falls back down to a lower energy level, a photon of red light is emitted. Light is electromagnetic radiation, energy transmission in which electric and magnetic fields travel as waves. The color of the light depends on the wavelength of the light, and the energy of the light emitted can be determined using the following formula, E equals H times C over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength, H is Planck's constant, and C is the speed of light.